Hello, this is Anna Alexander. Welcome to Dish About the Dish Happy Hour, where we are cruising through 1,200 recipes in the International Bartender's Guidebook, copyright 1996. And for me today, it's Halloween, so why not? Let's have a cocktail. And we are going back to our old friend we haven't seen till, uh, since episode one of this, which is gin. We are going to do two for you today, two gin beverages that on the surface look really similar. So we'll see, we shall see how we taste. And the first one we're going to start with is the All American Fizz. I cannot find out a history of why this is called the All American Fizz or where it came from. And it's a little bit different than the Alabama Fizz, which is the first one I did, because this one includes brandy. So we're gonna get our lovely stuff together, including our ice. We're gonna fill our chilled glass here with some ice. And with our shaker. And um, yeah, these are not very Halloween Folly-esque drinks, but who cares? We're just here to learn and we're still in the A section. <laughs> so for this one, we're gonna start with an ounce and a quarter of gin. And so for me, gin is still really floral. I can taste the plants in it. And I don't know if that's a good thing or not. I know that's the point, but it's not really to my palate, but we shall see. This one we're gonna to add to it an ounce of brandy and I am finding more and more cocktails with brandy in it. So I'm thinking I might need to invest in a larger bottle. And then this next ingredient, according to this recipe, I'm going by the book. This one says half a lemon, juice from half a lemon. Not an ounce of lemon, not half an ounce of lemon, but juice from half of a lemon. So that's oddly specific yet not all at the same time. And it looks like that's about an ounce from this specific lemon. And then we're going to add to this two dashes of grenadine and what that is, I don't know. So we'll go, we'll go how I feel like. Uh, a dash. And sure two. Here we go. <laughs> Shaking montage. Here we go. This one does not call for any sort of, ooh, I should look and see what I'm pouring. <laughs> there are no twists or anything added to it. So this would be it. Ta-da, our Alabama Fizz. So I'm not gonna lie, I'm looking really forward to this. It looks really refreshing. Oh, that was a big sip. You get gin, that plant, that flowery plant taste, and then that lemon juice comes right, right off the top. I don't know if I taste the brandy. I don't think I taste the brandy. I don't smell the brandy either. Can I stick my nose further in there? But it tastes like gin followed by lemon juice. Oh! I forgot an ingredient. <laughs> That's why it tastes so weird. Ta-da! <laughs> I'm like, this kind of tastes weird. And then I realized it's called the All-American Fizz and it wasn't fizzy. And that's why I'm like, this doesn't taste quite right. I'm missing the club soda. You're supposed to top it with club soda. There we go. I know it doesn't change the look of it at all, but let's see. Okay. That mellows it out a lot. It's a lot better if you uh, read all the ingredients and include them all. Okay, make sure you add your club soda to the All American Fizz and I think you might enjoy this. Yeah, I think I'm gonna finish this all and add more club soda to it. Okay, <laughs> so let me clean up and we'll get to our gin cocktail number two for today. So cocktail number two is called the Allen Cocktail. Again, I couldn't find any reasons why it's called the Allen Cocktail or even when it began. I'm gonna go, I guess, I'm gonna guess Prohibition because most of these gin cocktails started around Prohibition. And this one only has three ingredients, one of which 
is maraschino cherry liquor. So if you've used all the cherries, don't throw out the bottle yet because it still has some uses, which includes this cocktail. So this one is going to include your co chilled cocktail glass ready to go. And yes, I'm going to make sure I read all the ingredients this time. This one's an ounce and a half of gin. So way more gin, not way more gin, considerable amount of gin more than the last one. So we shall see. This one calls for a half an ounce of our maraschino liquor. I'm glad I can find reasons to use up every bit of this ingredient. And this one calls for a half ounce, one and a half teaspoons of lemon juice as I squirt myself in the face with it. There we go, one and a half. And no garnishes for this one, although I have seen like garnish with a lemon twist. But I'm going by exactly what the book says, so no garnish. Excellent. See now I've seen this be a lot lighter in pictures and I don't know why because there's maraschino cherry juice in it in quite a bit. Ooh. This also looks nice and summery on this great fall day, but here we have it, the Allen Cocktail. I can smell the gin as it approaches my nose. Very gin forward. Just a teeny, teeny, tiny bit of that cherry flavor at the very end kind of washes over. I can see me drinking this in the summer outside with some friends as we're plotting or watching the horse races. For some reason, I feel like I need to go bet on horses when I drink this drink. I don't know why. I wouldn't say it's my go-to favorite, but if somebody offered it to me, I would definitely finish off this glass. <laughs> But yeah, not a bad little cocktail. And it's really pretty too, especially in the sunlight. Don't know if you can see it there from my angle, but it's beautiful. But there we have it, two more gin cocktails to add to your repertoire. If you know why these are the way they are, what they came from, please let me know because I love the origin stories of some of these drinks and it actually makes me enjoy them just a little bit more. But thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you had a great Halloween Samhain season, season, a day. It feels like a season though because the seasons are rolling by. But I do again appreciate you spending time with me and I hope to see you again in the future. So just hit like and subscribe so you see when I post another video. And until next time, y'all.